Craig, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, this Great Reset Agenda does have a sparkling, startling similarity to elements of the Communist Manifesto, but it's not communism, is it? <laughs> Corey, we shouldn't be making jokes about this. This is one of the greatest threats to our freedoms and our democracy uh, that we face today. We have a group of global elites that have uh, taken over all these UN bu bureaucracies that at their core are Marxist and socialists. Uh, when the so-called uh, Cold War was over, uh, this group sort of snuck back in uh, all these power positions and now they see a way of uh, implementing their uh, sort of Marxist and socialist ideologies upon the world. We've got to call this out for what it is and we've got to push back very, very darn hard on it. Well, Craig, they tried this for a very long time with this anthropogenic global warming stuff. They wanted to basically de-industrialise the world, put more power in the hands of government. And, mm. and we even saw the Greens say they want a global governance. But when that failed, because I think people like you and others bell the cat on it, they've since grasped this COVID-19 right. as, a, as a means of, of forcing people to do things mm. that would otherwise be unacceptable. Um, have they used this pandemic as an excuse to further the agenda that was failing before? Well, Corey, we're seeing the same tactics that they're using with the pandemic uh, with the global warming scare. Uh, it's all about sensationalism, uh, creating these grave threats sometime in the future, uh, creating panic in society, hoping that people will actually surrender uh, their freedoms and hoping that weak politicians will surrender their nation's sovereignty uh, to these UN uh, power-hungry uh, bureaucrats. Uh, and also, Corey, yeah. everything that they're doing in this space hands a political, economic and military advantage to the Chinese communists. Everything we do about deindustrializing our nation, this net zero nonsense that we hear about. I think, in fact, any politician that pushes for net zero in Australia at one year, say 2050 or whatever, but says it's OK for the Chinese communists to have it to 2060, are engaging in an act of treason against our country. They are selling us out yep. and handing a competitive advantage to the Chinese communists. And we've seen how uh, you can trust them uh, today of the treaties that we have. They just throw it out the window. The idea that we just sort of give everything up, give up our industrial powers by 2050 and I expect the Chinese communists to do it by 2060 is a joke. And anyone that goes down this track, I said, is a traitor to our nation. Well, they're very strong words, Craig, but of course we know that they get directed back at us as well. Whenever you talk about the Great Reset or the, the collusion between um, behind uh, anthropogenic global warming, sure. the, the leftists and the, the, the internationalists push back and say, you're just conspiracy theorists. But everything I've spoken about tonight is available on the World Economic Forum's Great Reset mm. website. Now, here's a piece from the, their forum's YouTube site. I just want you to have a look. And it's not surprising that people who've been disenfranchised by a broken system and pushed even further by the pandemic will suspect global leaders of conspiracy. But the world's not that simple. OK, so, Craig, what we've got here is they're saying those people who've been marginalised or disenfranchised by the pandemic uh, will jump to conspiracy theorists. But <laughs> it's not that. We know government has forced this upon us and right. it's all hiding in plain sight. This is not a conspiracy. This is actually an agenda that is available on their website. If you go to their website, Corey, one of their own ads actually says, you will own nothing and, of course, you'll be happy. That's what they say. That's not just sort of someone making up or what they say. That's on their own website today that you can look it up. So every Australian needs to be aware uh, what we are facing, uh, what these UN globalists have in plan for us, uh, and how we have to push back hard against this, Corey. We've really got to call it out for what it is and try and make the Australian public fully aware of characters like this Klaus Schwab's and uh, uh, this Tedros character that runs the, uh, uh, the, the um, uh, World Health Organisation, what they actually have planned. As said, these people have backgrounds as Marxist and hardcore socialists, and they want to implement these policies upon the world because they think they're some uh, global elite uh, that knows better than the rest of the citizens. 
You know, I raised, I raised this point once before, Craig, about that thing. You will own nothing and you will be happy. It's sort of a, as a way of taking debt out of people. Mm. But ultimately, someone has to own the stuff and be renting it to you. <laughs> and you reckon that would be these big corporates that fly to Davos in their private jets and are, are all part of this cabal with the World Economic mm. Forum. You reckon they'll own everything? And just be leasing it to you. It's, it's back to the feudal serfs or, uh, or effectively wage slaves all the time, isn't it? Well, that's how every uh, socialist regime throughout history uh, has gone about. Uh, the idea that every, all the wealth is shared and all that is just has never happened. It all gets controlled by a small group of self-appointed elites uh, at the top. The control of the wealth, uh, they will own it and they will say what you can and cannot have. Uh, they want to control the, the food that they eat. Uh, they want to control our ability to travel. Uh, they want to control where we work, the type of electricity that we have, Corey. They basically want to crush all the freedoms that have been so hard fought by previous generations of Australians. I tell you what, and I, for one, are going to be pushing back on this as hard as I possibly can. Well, Craig, I'm just going to take you through um, a bit of history here and I'm going to ask you a question. Can you name one successful communist or socialist nation that has survived the length of time that hasn't committed egregious human rights violations or, uh, or bludgeoned people into submission and got there without a glorious revolution that's caused hundreds of thousands or millions of deaths? So yeah. There's a challenge for you. Tick, well, tick, Corey, tick. The, answer, the answer is zero. And we know these uh, totalitarian left-wing uh, regimes... Uh, where they've tried to implement these socialist policies, have caused 100 million deaths over the last century. That is their legacy. And unfortunately, that is not being taught in our schools today. This is another issue we have in our national curriculum. Uh, it's all this airy-fairy stuff. Uh, kids today in our schools have got to learn the history. Uh, they've got to learn you know, what the Eastern Bloc was like. Uh, there are so many Australian families that have elderly relatives that fled from behind that iron curtain to freedoms in Australia. And they must be horrified when they see what is happening today. Well, let me just finish on this note, Craig, before I let you go. What We do have a contemporary example of this, and that's Venezuela. Mm -hmm. the, the, the socialists seized power mm -hmm. through an election, whether it was right. rorted or not, it doesn't matter. They got in there, they secured the means of production, they've mm -hmm. destroyed an otherwise prosperous economy. And now people um, can use uh, Venezuelan bolivars or whatever they are as toilet paper because they're actually easier to come by than toilet paper itself. It's just outrageous, but it serves mm. as a prescient example about what happens when government gets too big, exactly. competition is reduced, and the means of production are taken away from mm. private mm. enterprise. Mm. Anyone that has any doubts on this, you're right. Go and look at what has happened in the so-called socialist uh, paradise of Venezuela uh, over the last decade. Uh, they're actually slaughtering the zoo animals because they can't feed themselves. And this is a country, Corey, Venezuela, that has more oil resources and more wealth than the Saudis. And yet they're living in yeah. abject poverty because of socialism. And, Craig, there was a bunch of Australian parliamentarians who invited right. Hugo Chavez, the architect of the Venezuelan disaster, That's... over here to lecture us on how to succeed with socialism. Aren't we glad no, not enough uh, heed was taken of that? Mm. Craig Kelly, you. you're a champion. Thanks for joining me on Bernardi Thanks, tonight. Thanks, Corey. Great to be with you.